Hello everybody, welcome back today. And today we're gonna to be going over Leco question 150, which is reverse polish notation. Uh, we'll go over, you know, how the idea to solve the problem and also, you know, the implementation of it. So without further ado, let's jump into it. All right, so here we have the question, uh, evaluate reverse polish notation. Uh, we're given an array of strings, uh, tokens here, and that these represent arithmetic expression in reverse polish notation. So. What this polish notation really is is called it's called a postfix, and uh, this is sometimes using this is used in computer science, but it's also sometimes used in math. And uh, what it really is is um, basically you're instead of and really in math when we have it we have PEMDAS right so it's something like this. We know that we have to do our parentheses first. What's in our parentheses first? So we add these and then we multiply it out, and we then we get nine right. But in uh, postfix notations, what happens is we put all our numbers first. And it kind of looks confusing, but it's something like this. We put our numbers first. So here's 2 and 1. And then we put our whatever operation is, which is addition. And then again, we repeat the process. So um, so yeah, what this is saying is 2 plus 1, because we have the first two numbers, 2 and 1. And then we add them. Then we, mul we have 3, and then we multiply 3 into whatever this product is, or this addition is. So... So in saying that, we have this kind of a question. And uh, here it says that we need to evaluate this expression and then return the uh, integer that represents the value of the expression. So basically, we need to find the answer at the end of the day. And these are our boundaries here, actually. And this, these are very helpful. So in these kind of questions, you always want to look at if there are any edge cases or boundaries that they don't want you to care about or if they want you to account for. So here it says the only four valid operations are you know, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So that means we don't have to do something like, you know, uh, power or something like that. We don't have to do any of that. And then each operand may be an integer or another expression. So it's not going to put in parentheses or anything like that. And then it's always saying division between two integers truncates towards zero. Um, this whole happens normally anyway, so we're actually okay with that. Um, and then it says that there will not be any division of zero. And this is huge, right? So you don't have to have an ed the edge case for this, right? We don't have to worry about, oh, if we get a division of zero, we should print this out instead. And then saying this input represents a valid arithmetic expression, so there won't be, like, any place where, you know, it's not going to be valid and where it's going to be, like, instead of, you know, in this case where we were saying, like, it should be like this, it won't be, like, messed around, so we won't have to figure that out, right? And then the answer and all intermediate calculations can be represented in 32-bit integer. What this is saying is that we don't have to use a long or a long, long in C++, so something like that. So we don't have to use the highest um, data, highest uh, size data type for an integer value. So here we can look at our examples. So we have our tokens right here, and these are just strings, right? So here we have 2, 1, plus 3, and multiplication. Just like what I was talking about before, we're at, what this is saying is we want to add um, 2 plus 1, and then we want to multiply by 3. And so actually the real advantage of reverse polish notation is that or RPN, is that we don't have to use uh, parentheses, right? There's no need of parentheses. The order that we keep it in is going to be the order that the expression is going to be evaluated in, right? And the greatest thing about this is it's linear, meaning that it's from left to right, right? We're starting from 2 and we're going to the end. We're not, you know, and sometimes in, a PEM, uh, in PEMDAS with parentheses, you have to come back, you have to multiply things, you have to divide things. We don't have to do any of that, right? So that's a really big advantage of this, and that's why a lot of computer scientists prefer this way, um, because it's it's a linear approach to the thing, and we don't have to worry about any edge case or anything like that. We just read left to right. And so here's another example for 13, 5. So yeah, here you see, like, it doesn't always have to be that the operation comes after the uh, the first two numbers, right? It can come after any amount of numbers. And what this means is that what this is saying is we're dividing 13 by 5, right? So what, what, what we need to know is that whenever we get an operation like this, the last two numbers are what we're computing the operation with. So we get 13 and 5 are our last two operations, so we're dividing that. And whatever comes first, um, or whatever you can think is on top, is going to be first. So this in this case, it's 13 divided by 5, not 5 divided by 13. And then we go to the next operation, add. And add pertains to whatever the, pro, so the division of this you know, set here is, and 4. So that's why it's 4 plus 13 divided by 5, which is going to give us 6. And this is because this is integer division, so this is going to be 2. Um, this is a huge one. But this is, again, the same thing. Like, here is our first operation. This pertains to uh, 3 and 9. Um, this is our second operation. This is going to pertain 
uh, with 11 and, and the sum of 9 and 3. So as you can see that, so it's multiplying it out. And then division comes right after it, and that's going to pertain with all the rest. So basically, this 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 order is allowing us to kind of mimic order kind of mimics parentheses in some sense, right? It mimics the idea of using parentheses and giving the order of PEMDAS, right? The order of operations. So I mean, we know we kind of understand the problem now, and now we got to think about it. Like, what are we going to do? So obviously, we need to go through every element in the in the tokens array, right? So we're going to go through all of them. So throughout tokens.length, we're going to go through every single element. And then what we can do is, the idea is that whatever we put in, right, like whatever value we have, we need to go in that specific order, right? So that's why here in this case, we were talking about how it's not 5 over 13. It's rather 13 over 5, right? It's not this, right? So we need to know, look at that order. So what that means is like we need to process this in a good order. And so something like that, something to do with order, we could think about a queue or a stack, right? Um, a stack is obviously last in, first out, you know, just like a stack of cards, something like that. And then a queue, on the other hand, is a queue. On the other hand, is first in, first out, right? So it's going to be processed in, you know, whatever order it came in is, is going to be first. So like if the first thing I push something in first and second, it's going to be pr processed in that order. Um, so in our case, we don't really need a queue, right? Because uh, we don't need a queue here because of the fact that these numbers were kind of just waiting until we get an operation and then whatever we push to the stack. So in this case, let's look at a stack here. So if I were doing this question, right? So two, one plus and three multiplication, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push numbers to my stack. So this, I'm gonna get pushed and then I'm gonna see an operation. What I need to do is I need to pop these two numbers out, right? Pop them out and then I perform the operation. And then what I do is, once I perform it, I'll get three, right? Two plus one will be three. And then what I'll do is now I'm gonna, these, the empty stack is empty, now I'm gonna push this value back in. So now I'm gonna have three. And then I go to another number, I push that in, and then I do multiplication. So what it's doing is it's gonna keep the bottom element right here. Uh, that's gonna be your solution. And every time we find the solution, we're gonna push it back into the stack, right? So every time we push it back into the stack, all we're doing is that at the end, uh, we're basically going to just pop our stack. So when we do stack.pop at the end, after we've gone through everything from left to right linearly, right, we're going to pop, and that last element is going to be your solution. And that's because we're keeping the running total, the running total, which is, or whatever our value expression is, right, the running total is staying in the stack. And this allows us to, you know, not use extra memory in, like, a variable or anything like that. And so stack works here. Now, a queue, what it would do is it would push in, right, it would be 2, 1, and then addition, now we could also just remove two things from the queue and do it that way. However, the stack seems more logical because we're going to push things back. What would happen is like if we had two, one in addition, we did we did our addition, right? We got three. We, when we push back into the stack, it would be put at the end. But instead, we don't want that, right? We want it to still be at near the top because the next operation that we compute will be on the product, right? Or the solution, whatever it is. So that's why a stack is perfect for this situation. Um, and one last thing is... Uh, this algorithm, right, it's going to work, uh, basically what we, it's going to work for any situation because what we're going to do is every time we see a number, we'll push it into the stack. So it doesn't matter. Like even if we had this complicated one right here, we'd push all these numbers into the stack. Every time we would see an operation is when we want to compute, right? So these operations will not be in the stack. Now there is a, there's, there is a way to do this with two stacks where you put operations and the numbers into two different stacks, but that is obviously extra memory that we do not need to compute, right? So the operations will not be in stack. Um, but yeah, that is that logic. So let's get to the computer and let's code this out. All right, so let's get to the solution here. Um, so again, I put some notes here just so we can recap from our uh, explanation on the iPad. Uh, but yeah, first we're gonna initialize our stack, right? So we need our stack uh, in order to you know push the numbers in to this. So yeah, I'm just gonna say stack, new stack. And yeah, I'm using Java, but really any language, the idea is the same. Um, so yeah, we got our stack here and now we need to loop through the token array because what we wanna do is we wanna go through every element and then once we see a number, we wanna add it into our stack. If it's not a number, if it's an operation, then we wanna compute, right? So what we're gonna do is, you know, loop through every element. So yeah, this is just, you know, going through the array of the, the tokens. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put, uh, I'm going to have a variable that's just going to be the token and it'll just be easier because um, 
and that way I don't have to keep referring to tokens at I for the array index value. So that will just make it, you know, simple. Um, but yeah, here what we can do is we can check if the token um, dot equals, you know, if it equals a star or um, a star is in multiplication, but I'm going to change it to addition so we have the right order. But yeah, if it's equal to any of the operations, and since the problem kind of told us that we're limited to only uh, four operations, we kind of can just write this out like that. Um, so yeah, this will be multiplication, this will be division. Um, but yeah, if it's equal to any of this, you know, what we'll do is we'll compute, right? Compute and push, not computer, uh, compute and uh, push back into the stack, push in the stack. Uh, if not, what we'll do is we'll push the number in. So we, if it's not any of those operations, we know for a fact it's a number because the question has given us those boundaries, those limitations. So what we'll do is we'll stack and then we'll push into the stack the token. Uh, now here you can see where I'm keeping an integer stack. So what we need to do is we need to cast this to a integer. So what I'm going to do is integer dot parse int. Uh, and this again, we, again, we know that it has to be an integer, so we don't have to do like any kind of error checking here. So yeah, I'm going to push into the stack. Um, now here we're going to compute, right? So again, we need, um, we need more if statements here kind of, so if it's equal to the plus, right, what we want to do is we want to find the sum. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to push that sum in. So we don't even really need a variable for that. What we can just do is stack. Uh, so actually, first one, first thing I'm forgetting is we need to pop the two numbers, right? So what we're going to do is n1. I'm just going to do stack.pop. And then, yeah, so we want to pop, pop the last two numbers because, again, we're guaranteed that the last two numbers will exist because we won't see an operation until we see two numbers at least before. We can have more, but at least we need to have two. And that's because we know that it's given that there has to be a valid expression in reverse polish notation. So we know this is going to be fact for sure. So we pop these two numbers and what we need to do is, um, so now these are removed from the stack. So now we just want to do compute computation and we want to push back. So we can do this all in one line actually. So what we need to do is stack that push and then I'll do just n1 plus n2, right? Uh, same thing if, uh, you know, if it's subtraction, we do the same thing. So I'm going to kind of just, uh, copy paste through a lot of it because it's it's just repetitive action here. So subtraction um, And so this will be multiplication and this will be division Um, so yeah, we'll do that Then we'll do that. Uh, now one thing we need to remember is um, In division what happens is in this case we saw here that it's 13 divided by 5 so in our stack if we're pushing like this it actually needs to be n2 divided by n1 um, because our the second number that we push is our second number that we pop is actually the first one that we saw right and so it's kind of so that that way we know which one we're actually dividing obviously addition and subtraction or even subtraction as well subtraction needs to be flipped as well uh addition multiplication they just these do, like the order doesn't matter for them we'll get the same answer so yeah uh we have we have the computation now all at the end we need to do is we need to do stack dot pop in fact i could just uncomment this and just put our parentheses but you know, we'll do that. And we're guaranteed that this is our solution uh, because we're always putting a running total of it into the stack. So this is definitely our solution, right? Uh, definitely our solution. So yeah, we can run this just to see if we're passing these uh, test cases. And yep, I do have a silly mistake somewhere. And that's because this should be token. Um, I've been putting tokens as in the array, but we just need to be comparing with just this token. And so again, we'll run it. And I guess I have something else. Oh, yeah, again, making silly mistakes. It should be dot equals. Uh, let's just make sure. Yeah, I don't think anything else is uh, syntactically wrong. Um, let's just make sure logic is good. So it looks like these three cases are passing. We'll submit. And we should have all the cases passing here. Yep. And yeah, B79.4% of the time, which is pretty efficient. And yeah, we're using very less memory. So yeah, that was reverse polish notation. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. And yeah, this was a medium uh, leak code question. But however, if you like know the idea and kind of think about the data structures, it's not too bad. Um, but yeah, please make sure to you know, like this video, subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out a lot. Um, yeah, and I hope to see you soon.